What's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all had a great Tuesday. Hope you're having a great work week so far. What we're going to talk about in this video and this evening's edition is we're going to step away from really talking about the severe weather in Nor'easter. And we're going to make a video tonight breaking down uh, the potential for a cold start to November. Uh, there's already been kind of um, I know, rumors about it and talks on a very cold start to the month which is November. Um, so that's what we're going to break down. We're really starting to have a little bit more confidence on what's going to happen. So we're going to go over that, talk about how cold it can get for certain areas, and uh, really just talk about what's going on. Uh, we're about to enter what's my favorite time of the year, which is the cold uh, the cold months, winter, even though in my area in Central South Carolina, we hardly ever see any winter weather, especially these days. I think it's been since, uh, except if you count the fluke event in November 1st, 2014, the last widespread winter storm we got here in central South Carolina was February 2, 2014. Uh, so it's been a very long time. I, I, I didn't even have kids then. I have kids now. I have kids that are wondering when it's going to snow after watching Frozen. And uh, their daddy is definitely wondering the same thing. And unfortunately, I can't deliver because I can't control the weather. Or it would snow a lot during the winter. But uh, hopefully we can real, real one in for the entire South this year and you know instead of just people in texas and mississippi and louisiana hopefully we all can get into some fun so i'm going to really really enjoy talking winter weather with you guys this season so uh, it's been pretty slow for the last month uh hurricane season really cut off very quickly which is good uh, but if you guys have not subscribed hit the subscribe button like the video if you like it, it helps the videos get out there and uh, thank you all for the continued and amazing support anything that i can pray about put in the comments it gives me an opportunity to Pray for you guys. It gives us all an opportunity to pray for one another. So thank you all for the amazing support. Let's get this rolling. So right now we're going to look at the basically the uh, Climate Center, it's National Weather Service, the Climate Center uh, Center here. This runs from November 1st to the 5th, 6 to 10 day outlook here. And this is basically the first five days of November. Well below average temperature setting up. This includes the upper Midwest, the Dakotas, Minnesota. This includes uh, the Ohio Valley, the Southeast, the South and portions of just the eastern U.S. in general. Uh, but really the uh, center of this really cold air is going to be centered over this portion right here, and that's because a big-time cold front looks to be setting up here. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of another cool down, a reinforcing cool down around Halloween here in the next couple days. But that's really in response to a cutoff low, which really isn't a nice, genuine, good cold air source. It basically brings its own cold air, but it's never really, really cold. It's just comfortable cold. When you have a cold front that comes down that really uh, brings down energy, I guess you can call it, from the true Arctic, when you have a full, um, <clears throat> you can call it a cross-polar flow, but I wouldn't really want to call it that, but basically when you have the cold air coming from the most northern areas, the Arctic, that's when you have that real, real cool down. I'm not talking about necessarily an Arctic air mass, uh, for this time of the year, but very, very cold air and below, below average temperatures potentially for November. Now we look at the November 3rd to the 9th range, below average temperatures really set up here just for that lot of the southeast and southern areas. And that's because basically it's saying that that front potentially moves into this region and cools the southeast down big time. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. And I uh, really think in the first 10 days in November it can be colder than average for a lot of people. What's going on here? And I'll talk about what I'm talking about. I'll talk about what I'm talking about, whatever that means. I'll talk about what I'm meaning here as far as a cutoff low and then a just a full-fledged jet stream uh, dive south um, here, right here. So what we got here is this is starting off tomorrow morning. Um, you have, this is your cutoff low. When you have a cutoff low, it's basically... And this is a huge cutoff load. It's you know a cold front, but it's a difference. A piece of energy that's trapped under ridging, or a piece of energy that gets trapped south of the main flow of energy, the main jet stream, and it brings its own cold air. A lot of times, you can have some big weather makers with this. You can have severe weather. You can have flooding, or you can just have cold air. Sometimes you can have. Um, it can be 45 degrees outside. And it can be sleeting or grapple can be falling. That's because. When a uh, upper, uh, usually a cutoff low happens, it brings its own cold air, which means it cools down all layers of the atmosphere, which means that it can do, it, just the weather can get kind of funky, especially if it's really cool outside. Um, but this is a cutoff low. Now you're seeing these deep blue colors and you're thinking, well, it's going to get really cold here at the end of the week. It's not what that means. Um, it's basically reinforcing a fall air mass. So it's going to be very comfortable through the weekend and, uh, you know, through Halloween. 
what goes on here is this moves on and by the way this has a chance to promote a severe weather threat for areas of the southeast here in the coming days i'll talk about that tomorrow but going forward here um this this piece of energy moves out the way and what happens here is you get pretty much a full-on flow here where you get ridging in the west and troughing in the east and uh you know this is basically the the look you want when you want a real true source of cold air coming from the Arctic region region here. And you see the blues diving down all the way from areas of Canada all the way down to the south. That is a true source of cold air. So this is a more intense, um, definitely cold front that really can, can really cool us down for the first full weekend of November. So if you're like me and put up all your Christmas decorations literally right after Halloween, I'm not lying, guys. I, I go ham with the Christmas. Um, we normally do it the first weekend. I'll be in the mountains that weekend, but as soon as we get back that Sunday, which I guess will be the seventh, um, we're putting up all of our Christmas stuff and it's Christmas time in our household. Uh, and it just looks like it might be a nice chilly weekend to do some. So, so it might put you a little bit more in the spirit, but, uh, this looks like a nice, you know, if you call it nice, if you like cold air, this looks like a pretty significant cold front for the first, um, <clears throat> for late next week into next weekend. Um, as far as dew points, what we can look at here is, uh, we'll back it up here. We'll start off Thursday morning. Um, uh, you see this little, little bit of a warm front riding ahead of this, uh, cold front moving ahead, which is pretty much our cutoff low energy. Um, this could promote a little bit of a severe weather threat as we're getting into Thursday. This moves to the Carolinas and this is where our severe weather threat could happen here Thursday evening across the Carolinas where there's already a slight risk because there's going to be a chance of severe weather. After that moves through, more drier air gets reinforced, dew points in the 40s and 50s, nothing crazy but much more comfortable air. Um, this moves through, stays comfortable through Halloween um, and really we're watching this. This is still 150 hours out plus, but look at these dew points. Well into the 20s, this would be, you know, make a low temperature bill to drop much further, which is what we call wet bulb, which we'll talk about more over the winter. But you can tell a much drier air mass, which is likely a much cooler air mass, drops into the lower 48 and is more widespread. And you see dew points making it all the way to the 20s and 30s. Uh, as far south as the Carolinas and the deep south, Alabama, Mississippi. To, to me, that leads me to believe that this will be our first widespread frost and freezes for areas of the south <clears throat> and obviously areas of north into the mid-Atlantic and northeast who have not seen frost and freeze yet. So <clears throat> how cool this air mass is going to be is still a question, but it's really looking like a first significant significant cold front as far as being a widespread frost and freeze. We look at the Euro, same situation, brings a quick uh, cold front that reinforces our dry air into the Halloween weekend. And then look at these dew points, the pinkish, pinks area you're sh showing up here. This shows a much more cooler air mass and dry air mass dropping down. I mean, it's just a wholesale drop down from Texas all the way to the northeast. And it starts moving in very slowly as we're getting into around Thursday of next week. So November 3rd, 4th, or 5th time frame, this dew points all the way into the 20s and 30s as we're getting into Thursday morning, which leads me to believe that you're gonna have widespread frost and freezes outside of the mountains. So the potential for growing season looks to be ending as we get into our first weekend of um, November. But as far as what the temperatures look like, we'll take a look at the European <clears throat> as we get into our Thursday um, for highs, you know, pr pretty warm. This is 2 p.m. This would be considered 2 p.m. You know, you got highs in the 70s, but you got this cold air pocket of air showing up here in response to this cutoff low. So, you know, the mountains are going to be chilly, um, but you get into the weekend, Friday morning, chilly temperatures across basically the entire eastern U.S., except where the moist and warm sector is setting up across eastern Carolinas. Then the cool front continues to move through. And uh, chilly morning, nice fall, pretty much average temperatures across the eastern U.S. Nobody's super cold, even up here in the northeast. And that's just because this isn't really a true source of cold air. But as we get into our Halloween, a nice pleasant Halloween, uh, beautiful fall-like temperatures. But as we're getting into next week, that's when we start watching this cold air drop down. These are temperatures. So we're getting into Tuesday afternoon of next week and look at this cold front. This is pretty sharp. This shows highs in the 70s and 60s in Arkansas, but then in Missouri, you got highs in the 40s and close to 30s 
Um, so significant gradient here. This continues to drag southeast, and then we get into highs around next Wednesday. 70s in the Carolinas, but Tennessee 40s and 50s for highs. So this is a big time cold front as far as you know the Midwest. This could be our first significant hard freeze. But even for you guys, you know I'm not seeing super cold temperatures. Um, but it really looks like our first significant um, cold front of the year as it moves. Um, we're getting into Thursday, next Thursday morning. We've got lows in the 30s outside of the mountains. So chance for our first uh, frost and freeze. <clears throat> but we'll see how this goes. Um, there's still a lot to figure out. Um, maybe next Thursday looks like a very chilly day across the entire east, the entire U.S. in general, except South Georgia, South Alabama. Mississippi and uh, Florida, but it looks like a really chilly day uh, next Thursday and then maybe a little more chillier afterwards, but we're trying to still trying to figure out what this pattern is going to do. As far as any precipitation with this, you know, that this cutoff low energy moves through, promotes a severe weather threat, and then we get into next week, and then in response with this cold front, there might be a piece of energy uh, that really brings the first significant snows across portions of the central Midwest. And I want to watch this. This could bring some mountain snows, interior snows across the uh, interior northeast, and maybe even as far south as the southern Appalachian Mountains in West Virginia and North Carolina, Tennessee. I'll have to watch this. But then another piece of energy shows up. <coughs> and this has been showing up quite often for you folks in the panhandle of uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Um, but it, a lot of times you see these systems in this, in this range, and they like to disappear. But this would bring a snow event for Amarillo, which is not super uncommon for this time of year. You get what you call blue northerns in this part of the uh, in this part of the year across the central south central US and the Midwest and which are very sharp cold fronts that can bring uh, basically a dynamic weather. It could be 80 degrees one day and the next day it's 30 degrees and snowing. Um, it's very very crazy weather out there. I try to tell people around here in the Carolinas, you know, they always say uh, the weather's always changing. Try living out there. I, I assure you, it's a, it's a lot much. It's different beast out there for sure. But um, we gotta watch this little system, see what it does. But there's still not enough cold air for there being any rare uh, early season snowfall or anything like that, guys. But um, <clears throat> you're looking at the GFS shows the system for late for late this week. Then we get in the uh, into November first, our first day of November, and uh, you see these blue lines. That's the 540 line. That's the 32 degree line. And uh, it's starting to drop down here. And, uh, you know, it's not the 32 degree line necessarily at the surface, but in a loft. Um, but, you know, it brings in, it gets into next week, midway next week. And, uh, you know, you see that blue showing up across the higher elevations of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia. So, might be a little cold air associated with this cold front bringing down. Maybe like an anafront type situation um, where you have rain at first and snow in the backside, but I, I doubt it. But it's going to be interesting watching for sure. Um, but we'll see what kind of system is associated with this cold front. But it's really looking like it's going to be a cold first several days of November coming up. Um, a great way to bring in the cooler seasons. Uh, really, when it gets into November, personally, I start locking into them uh, cold weather um, months. So that's all I got, guys. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow. I'll talk about the severe weather threat for Thursday for the Carolinas and uh, give you all any other updates of what's going on. Y'all have a blessed night. Thank you all for tuning in.